But let me tell you why it's a complex issue, but nevertheless, an issue that will not go away. Number one, taxes. It is a tax issue. You see it all around you. Every one of the school districts that we're in has been challenged about the level of the school budget because of the taxes being imposed as so-called real, uh, real estate taxes on residents. Uh, I can tell you I hear it because my mother, she's 82, she still lives in the house that my dad and mom bought in 1957 when we moved from the Bronx. And I guess as you get older and your mortgage is paid off, you feel the pain a lot more because you have to then go and withdraw from savings accounts to pay your school taxes and your real estate taxes. So I hear it a lot from mom, but I hear it from constituents. They're saying, why are our taxes keep going up? And, and, and by the way, we helped build these neighborhoods, these communities. Why is it that we can't afford to live here and retire here? So the issue of taxes is there. Number one, the amount of taxes, they're much too high. And within that, the issue of fairness. Is it right to be taxing real estate to fund education? Now, that's an issue that we're not going to deal with tonight, but it does raise the issue in a lot of people's minds that, well, if the taxes are too high, maybe I want to question the entire way we're structuring the way we pay for education. So number one, it's a tax issue. Number two, it's a quality of education. It's a service issue, certainly in New York State. I'll give you two statistics. New York State ranks 41 on SAT scores in the nation. 50 states, we rank 41. That means that, what, 40 states are better than us. Uh, we rank 40th in the um, amount of people who graduate and, and then go on to, to college. That's a problem. That is telling us something, that the quality of education is not what it should be. So there is a service issue here. What other issue is there? Uh, I believe there's also a First Amendment issue. What is wrong with the American system that says that it's my money, I should have a choice in the way I spend it? That's kind of freedom of speech. It's American. And I think that came through on the tape. So I think there is a First Amendment issue here as well. Uh, I can tell you, as you heard me say on the tape, it's not a church-state issue. The antagonists, or the people who are against vouchers in school, are people who are trying to stifle the debate by immediately coming up with this uh, boogeyman saying, well, we cannot see public money going into churches. I think we dispel that on the tape by saying that no one prevented the GIs from going to Fordham University and St. John's. They could pick public schools, private schools, and this is the same kind of program. The money is not going to the institutions, it's your money coming back to you, a portion of it, so you can take it and choose where you would send your child. Another issue it is, is I believe a restraint of trade issue. And we have to bring this out more and more. We have a monopoly. It's the National uh, Education Association. It's the established bureaucracy. They don't want to see change. They like the current system because they've been able to direct dollars away from the classroom to the administration. And however you call it, whether it's political patronage, helping my friends, uh, keeping uh, you know, my industry secure, it's not going to educate the children, and this is wrong. So, what is the answer? The answer, obviously, is a system that allows you, the parent, for your child, to choose a place that you feel will better educate your child. Now, one of the things we don't want to see is the destruction of the public school system. That's not what this is about. This is about making the public school system more responsive, better making it giving making it give the community a higher level of service so that our children are better educated so how do we do that well we have specific bills in Albany and we have a bill in the United States Congress now let me dispose of the Congre congressional bill right now because it really isn't a uh, in my mind 
a real school choice bill. But it is a bill, and this is Senator Coates and Senator Lieberman in the Senate, and in the House it's Congressman Weldon from Pennsylvania and Congressman Riggs. Um, I think they call it the School Choice and Educational Equity Act. What they are trying to do is really an experiment. They're saying, let's begin the debate at the national level. Let's begin the process of leading to a school choice program, but let's start with a demonstration program. So what they're saying is that we will allow 100 districts, school districts across America, and mainly this is geared to the districts with the highest percentage of low-income families, obviously. We will allow these districts to apply for a federal grant of up to $5 million. And that money then will come to the district, and the district will decide how that money is allocated with vouchers to the individuals so that it, that money can be used within the system. That's the federal version. The state version is different. Senator Maltese introduced it, and it's one that I favor. Uh, and basically, it's a four-year phase-in program. It says in the first year, we're going to take a percentage of the taxes you pay already, let's say 20% in the first year. And that 20% will not go directly to the school district. The 80% that you pay already will go to the school district. So we're hardly dismantling or emaciating uh, the uh, public school system. But we know that the schools in the districts <coughs> need 100%. So what happens to that 20%? The 20% goes back to a pool that then gets reallocated into vouchers back to those parents with children so that they now can take that 20% individually in voucher form and shop for a school that they feel will best educate their children. Now all things take time. It's going to take a few years to evaluate performance. but. It's an evaluation that comes from the marketplace, comes from the consumers, the parents, and their students, and their, and their children. That is the American way. Let the people choose what is working and what is not working. And <coughs> then in the second year, another portion would go. So basically what you have is a system whereby certain schools will attract perhaps more of those vouchers and their budget, instead of being 100%, may be 110. And some schools won't attract 100%. They will be somewhere less because they're not performing as well. But this is the marketplace working. I think this is a fair experiment, and I think it's one that should begin. Now, we don't have enough sponsors on these bills, and that was what this was all about. Tim Mulhern's organization is trying to impart information uh, to the people in the state. And you know what Thomas Jefferson said, information is the currency of democracy. So we're trying to get information to people so they can, number one, understand the problem, and number two, act on it. And the way you act on it is to lobby or to at least uh, contact your legislators, whether they be assembly people or senators, uh, state senators, uh, and your federal representatives, and weigh in and say, hey, why aren't you on that bill? Um, I don't know how many s people are on the Sir Maltese bill at this time, but it's not many. It's less than a dozen, as I recall. Maybe just, is it 19 now? Okay, well, it's getting there, but it's still not where it should be. So I think that's what this process is all about, and that's why we have to continue bringing this message uh, around the, uh, the state. I, for one, will always speak for school education or school choice. Uh, I have seen it work myself. I am the product of private school education. My parents are immigrants who came here looking for the American dream. And part of that was to educate their children even though they didn't have access to it. My mother went to the eighth grade. My father went to the fourth grade. I'm the first one in my family in Lord knows how many years to go to high school and college. I'm the oldest of three. But I went to St. Martin of Tours uh, School in the Bronx. Well, today, I go back to that school, I visited with Sister Cecilia, I've tried to find the alumni to create some money because I see how that school right now is serving the minority communities in that area. And it's incredible 
to see 99% of the graduates go to high school and, and to see how well they're educated. And I think this system would replicate that throughout. There, they're trying to get contributions and alumni to participate. Here, it's a system whereby the parents would get that money in part back from real estate taxes and in part, hopefully, back from the federal government through a voucher system. So with that, I'm going to end my comment. I think that's the only summary I can give you that would add a bit to what you've seen already. And perhaps you have a question or two that I might be able to elucidate on. And, and thank you very much for being here. Yes.